Uh, hello, this is a quick tutorial on using Blender to make uh, 2.5D parallax animations. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm, that's, I believe, what they're called. Um, so, to start with, you would need a, um, an image that's got some foreground, midground, and background, perhaps, that you're going to split off into um, various layers and, um, and save with transparencies as a PNG file. So I use GIMP, um, you could use Photoshop or, or whatever program you want and basically just mask out um, your three distinct layers um, as I've got here the cloud, the background, then I've got a tree in the midground and another tree in the foreground. Um, it is a good idea to label them so you don't get confused. Um, the, the detail of the cloud behind the tree or, you know, you, you, you've just got to sort of um, create that by cloning and healing and um, just to, to cover up the detail behind, um, you know, what's missing there. Uh, so once you've done that, you've cut them out, um, go ahead and, and you save them as PNG files um, with the transparency. Um, the compression level I set to nothing. Um, I know PNG is lossless anyway, but I set it to nothing just so the computer doesn't have to work so hard. Um, it, it makes a much bigger file. You can see there it's a 128 meg. Um, it's a pretty big image. But uh, I just figure it might help the animation um, software work a little bit faster without uh, having to uncompress the PNG when it uses it. So just saving the three distinct images here, um, putting them in the folder, and then firing up Blender. Um, there's a couple of settings that you'd need to do, especially if you're using a laptop when you first open Blender. Um, the first is you get user preferences, add-ons, and search for planes. It's the quickest way to find it. And import, export, images as planes, make sure that's ticked um, and that allows it to deal with the PNG transparencies. Next one under input, um, I use emulate numpad and emulate three button mouse because I'm using a laptop that doesn't have a dedicated numpad. Um, if you're using a desktop computer you probably don't need to do that but um, that's pretty helpful. Uh, the N key and the T key um, show and hide these menus which is kind of useful the object tools and the transform side there uh, okay so we want to import our images as planes under file import uh, you just select each one holding down the shift key on the folder where you save them um, deselect align planes and select shadeless use alpha and z transparency um, this just enables you to um, to have the transparency in the PNG files. Uh, once they're loaded, they come up as, um, oh, under Blender Render uh, I use. Blender Game apparently you may need to use for some other versions of Blender, but Blender Render works for me. The three images come up as Plane, Plane 1, Plane 2, but first thing I do is rename them um, so I don't get confused. So Tree Near, um, I call that one. Uh, and then I set the locations all to zero so they're in the middle of the screen under transform location there. Okay, uh, just turning the little eye on to make the next one visible and renaming that to tree far. And again, just getting the X, Y and Zs to zero on that one. You don't need to worry um, what it looks like in this window. The animations and the, the images have a, an outline around them, um, sort of like a focus peaking outline. Um, I guess that's just to help see them, but it doesn't come out in the final animation. It just looks a little bit rough here, but that all goes away. Um, now the Z here is, uh, it's, it's a plane how far away or how close those image planes are. So if you set the furthest one, the background, to say minus 20, then the tree far to minus 10, then it just sort of stacks them 
um, towards you. If you click on the screen and you click zero on your keyboard, it shows you like a, another angle and you can see that the planes there, they're stacked one on top of the other and um, you can zoom in and out just rolling the mouse key but altering the Z on the camera here now uh, moves the camera up and down through those images. It's a little bit to get your head around um, initially but it's pretty easy um, you know once you've had a play with it X and Y moves the camera um, you know left right up and down hit zero again to take you back to this this plane of looking straight through the camera um, and again just altering the Z numbers and the and the Y numbers the X numbers you can you can see the camera moving around um, rotation also uh, it rotates the camera instead of moving it on an equal plane it's it's pointing in a different direction um, if you click zero again you can um, have a play with the the rotate and see what it's actually doing it's like tilting the camera in the Y and and then tilting the camera in the X direction okay and Z um, tilts it on, an, on the Z axis it's zero again to take you back to this menu and just having another look at what the X and Y rotations do so here I've rotated the camera Y negative 19 and now moving all the way across and zooming in and out to get the sort of first frame of where I want the animation to start and just lining it up so that the, the camera gets uh, a full image you know there's there's nothing missing in there once you've got it um, your first frame set you make sure you're on frame one and you insert your keyframes for location scaling and rotation uh, then you can drag across or you can just click across to um, the last frame um, Mine's going up to 350. The default might be 250, but um, you can change that. So now I'm at the last frame, and I'm just moving the camera across again, altering the rotation angle and the location of the camera to the last frame. So you just set the first frame, you set the last frame, um, and you have a bit of a play around. I'm just altering uh, the angle a little bit more. You can see how things in the background, midground, and foreground alter when you when you're moving the camera back and forth. Um, it's it's like 3D, I guess that's why it's called 2.5D. So again, inserting the location, rotation, and scale of the camera for the last frame, and it's kind of all you have to do. Then, as it will animate through those frames, and it will just um, give you that that 3D effect. Um, you can then position the clouds or the trees um, however you want. I'm, I'm moving the clouds further away here just to so that it, it gives the illusion of moving a little more. You can alter the scale just so it makes sure it, it fills the frame, um, that you're not cropping anything out. Uh, and then as I scale through you can see the sky is moving a bit more there. It's, it's more dramatic um, and it's just all preference you know you just play around with it and make it make it look how you want um, maybe uh, you, there's a fine line between making it look realistic and making it look you know a bit overdone so um, here I'm just moving the um, the clouds back into position on the final frame and um, and then again once you've got it lined up you would just insert the keyframes again just overwriting the last ones you did you don't have to remove them you can just you just overwrite them okay so that gives the illusion of the of the clouds moving as the camera um, scrolls back and forth and if you think maybe the that tree there maybe or the, doesn't look um, actually that what I'm doing here is just 
moving the sky around a little more and you can sort of bend it forwards or towards you with that X and Y rotation and it, it just gives it a little bit of a different effect to the clouds moving um, as you scroll, scroll through. Yeah, just a little bit of a different animation look to it there. The cloud's sort of um, rolling up over the tree a little bit. Okay, and, and now just uh, highlighting the tree far and just pushing it back a bit too, just to give it a little bit more movement in the image. Um, just moving it back and forth with the Z there and making sure that when I go to the last frame that it's still in but it, it's not actually, it's a little bit cropped out so first off just um, inserting the keyframes again for the tree far then rolling to the end last frame and I can see that it's just cropped a little bit out so I've got to move it a bit to the left um, just to make sure it's, it's in that last frame and just inserting the keyframes again for that. Okay, and it, yeah, it looks fairly realistic and it, it doesn't look too bad. Obviously I'm doing it just kind of quick here just to show what it does. So you can go back to the camera, hit T and N again to get rid of the, the, um, the panels and you can just play through and, and have a look at, at what your animation looks like. nothing going out of frame um, and once you're happy with it um, you can then set up your file name and uh, get ready to uh, create the animation so just hitting that little camera tab there we've got uh, render presets I'm going to choose 720p you can alter the X and Y um, dimensions of it you can alter the frame rate so if you wanted, say, a little anamorphic cinemascope squeeze, you can um, reduce the Y from 720 to 560 or whatever you want. Or you can um, increase the X. You can change the start and finish frame there. And just make sure that you um, rename it to whatever you want because the default in Blender is to just overwrite. So um, that can be a bit of a trap for young players. Uh, once you're ready, you just hit render animation and depending on how big your image is and how fast your computer is, it uh, goes through frame by frame animating it. Um, does a, it, it does a pretty good job and, and you can do things on your computer while this is working and it doesn't really seem to affect it too much. Um, well, that's, that's my experience so far. Alright, and just having a look at the... Um, the final animation, I, I just tweaked it a little bit more um, and that's what it looks like. So um, I hope you got something out of this and uh, have fun with your um, Parallax 2.5D animations.